self-awareness is a superpower thank you for visiting soul and vibration this video is about the zodiac sign aquarius aquariuses are born from january 20th through february 18th i had to look at my notes because i don't know that by heart yes from january 20th to february 18th aquarius is a fixed air sign masculine and ruled by the planet saturn and uranus saturn was the original ruler uranus is the more basically is the overall ruler now but i think it's important for us to not forget about the original rulers I, because i feel like that energy is still dominant within the archetype of the sign itself aquarius rules the 11th house in astrology and the symbolism for aquarius is the water bearer and what i think is super cool about the water bearer is that for me the water bearer symbol symbolizes a few things about aquarius it shows the Aquarius's humanitarian side carrying water for the greater good of the whole and it shows that even though Aquarius's are an air sign fixed air meaning fixed in thought Aquarius's are also emotional but they carry their emotions different because water represents our emotions so I feel like when it comes to Aquariuses and their emotions they are emotional and all Aquariuses aren't created equal you'll find that the ones in February are more emotional than the ones in January and I'll tell you why later on in the video because I will show you that all Aquariuses aren't created equal but stay tuned for that so yeah with the um, the symbolism of the Aquarius being the water bearer yeah, that tells me that Aquariuses carry their emotions different from other people where we probably most pe emotions are known to be carried on the inside where I feel like Aquariuses might carry on the outside. And you probably say, what do you mean by that carry on the outside? I don't believe that Aquarians show their emotions, but at the same time, I feel you can see their emotional nature by their need for their need to escape and to be alone and time for themselves and i'll get into that a little bit more but um i wanted to talk about aquarius being ruled first by saturn and then by uranus saturn being the the planet of boundaries responsibilities restrictions and uranus being the planet of sudden and unexpected changes and innovation and rebellion and just all the great things that bring change in order to bring change you have to rebel so i feel like aquarians are a mixture of all of that it's like they're a mixture of responsible the need to feel responsible for the whole that's where that humanitarian side comes in but then there's also another side of them that just wants to be free that just want that just wants to do things the way they want to do things and not dance to the beat of everybody else's drum because if you know aquarius the sign you'll know that they don't dance to the beat of everybody else's drum they tend to do things differently the way the way that makes sense to them ruling the 11th house the 11th house has to do with small groups aquarians are known for being associated with a bunch of different small groups but not fully committed to any so it's like aquarians like to be able to um participate in this group whenever they feel like it but then move on and come back whenever they feel like and the reason for the different groups that aquarians are associated with represents the different parts of their personality and i feel like a person once ruled by saturn who is strict and all about responsibility and boundaries and just being disciplined and hardworking and then Uranus who is unorthodox and just untraditional and unique in every single way like that those are two different personalities and then the water bearer carrying the water on the carrying the water carrying this burden carrying this responsibility for the collective 
there is so many different sides to that so many different parts of that air signs represents pretty much the mind and the way of thinking and fixed air shows to me a person who is pretty stubborn when it comes to their way of thinking pretty fixed when it comes to the way how they see things and the way how they might feel about things but then again i feel like with aquarius it's not just that simple because even though they might be fixed when it comes to the way they think and see things here comes uranus being innovative in order to be innovative you can't be completely fixed so i feel like yes aquarians are a fixed air sign but at the same time i feel like the uranus energy shows a cardinal side to this sign cardinal meaning the sudden and unexpected sides of this sign i feel like the water bearer also shows like another side to this sign carrying the water carrying emotions carrying the need to wanting to make this world a better place carrying the need to wanting to give back somehow that's also an emotional side of an aquarius and aquarians are known to be humanitarians and i feel like in order to take up that responsibility to want to make this world a better place you can't just be operating from the air element because the air element is to me the air element is just air is thought it's it's yeah it's air it's thought it's able it, emotions aren't involved and in, and to want to take up the responsibility to help others there's empathy there emotions have to be involved so i feel like assigning aquarius to uranus is perfect because i feel like aquariuses are just super complex but in a unique way and that is why they are so innovative because they are unlike everybody else there's so much sides to the aquarius and another thing i was thinking about is Aquarius's opposition which is Leo so on one side of the zodiac wheel is Leo and on the opposite end is Aquarius Leo having to do with you know being basically focusing on the self because Leo is ruled by the Sun and the Sun has to do with our, our identity how we identify within ourselves and the whole heart space and whatnot but Aquarius being on the opposite end isn't focused on the self, is more focused on the collective. There is a side to Aquarius where they are focused on themselves, but you don't see that when you see them because when you see an Aquarius, they are in group mode, they are in team player mode. But whenever they disappear, that is when they go to focus on themselves. And another thing with the zodiac wheel with leo being on one side and aquarius being on other with leo being ruled by the sun the sun is all on one side so that leaves the aquarian side in complete darkness so i feel like because that leaves the aquarian side in complete darkness i feel like the aquarian zodiac signs don't number one like show-offs don't like attention seekers and I feel like because the sun and all of that light and attention is on the opposite side, Aquarians don't allow themselves to pretty much, don't allow themselves to get attention. Like they don't allow themselves to like the idea of attention, too much attention, even though they deserve it. And I feel like deep down they want that attention. Because I personally believe that if an Aquarius truly checks for you, whenever they disappear, they want you to check on them. They don't want you to smother them, but they want to, you to check on them. I feel like that them disappearing is them going to reflecting and giving themselves the attention that they need. But at the same time, it's a test for you to see if you notice that they're even gone. You know, so when you check for your Aquarius and they go off, you know, send a, a, a note, send a kite, send a message that say, hey, I hope all is well. Just know that I'm thinking about you. I feel like that is important for an Aquarius, even if they don't say it. And I feel like another reason for Aquarius's need to 
take time away and just go off on their own is because they don't feel like they can truly be themselves around most people. I feel like it's rare when Aquarians find people that they can truly be themselves with. And when they do find these people that they can truly be themselves with, <clears throat> they will have a hard time leaving these relationships they will have a hard basically once an aquarian finds a person they can be themselves with this relationship can pretty much like be their destruction in the sense that once they've felt at home like that with someone they have a hard time leaving and walking away even when this person is the most toxic person ever even when this person is bringing them down they won't know how to leave because that feeling of home is not something that they feel nor this not something that they commonly experience in this lifetime and i feel like it starts out with the planetary alignment i said this in the introduction to astrology video and i feel like there's some truth to it because the so above so below the planets basically i feel tells a story about what's happening on earth and also what's happening within us and aquarius Scorpio and Pisces were the three signs that were assigned to new rulers and this might sound crazy me even thinking this but I just have that kind of a mind I feel like with Aquarians being pushed off from Saturn to Uranus even though Uranus is a perfect fit of theirs I feel like that says a lot like imagine growing up into in a household and your parents have you and your other siblings but you were pushed off to go and live in another household even though in that other household that you were adopted to you got way better treatment than what you would have got at home even though you might know that to be true you still can't get over the fact that <clears throat> you didn't get the attention that you needed the fact that you were pushed away so i feel like that planetary play has a lot to do with the psyche of aquariuses scorpios and pisces but yes with aquarius yeah they don't allow themselves to feel safe with people and they test you by pretty much going away coming back seeing how much you miss them see how much you react to them being gone see if you completely didn't even notice that they're gone and again like i said i believe that with i believe aquarius is it's like they it's it's almost like the virgo energy because i have virgo in my chart a strong virgo and i have my moon in leo but because my Virgo, because I have a Virgo rising, like my moon in Leo wants me to shine and gain attention and recognition, but my Virgo rising makes me feel like I need to earn it. Like it makes me feel like basically you need to earn the attention that you get. That's what I feel like my placement does for me. And I feel like it's the same for just the Aquarian archetype in the sense that the Aquarius Aquarians earn their attention by being for everyone else, by putting everyone else in front of themselves. And like I said, with Leo being on the opposite sign and the sun being on that side of the chart, taking up pretty much focusing all the energy on the Leo side and the Aquarian side of the chart being completely dark. I feel like Aquarians tend to feel overlooked, even if you grew up in a family where you were smothered by one parent the one who you wanted to see you was the one who didn't see you and that pretty much shaped your life it it, it it played a it plays a huge part in you being who you are i feel like with the sun being on one side and leaving the other side dark the aquarius side of the the aquarius side of the wheel dark the sun has to do with our ego and how we identify with things. And I feel like Aquarius's need to always escape also shows a struggle when it comes to identity, 
it's like basically a sh yeah a struggle when it comes to identity and i can see how identity can be a struggle because here you have saturn who is just like here you have saturn aquarius's old ruler who is a parent that doesn't give a crap about how you feel all saturn cares about is results and now you have Uranus who is untraditional. So you had a traditional parent who is just super strict. Now you have a untraditional parent who doesn't care what you do, do what you wanna do, just make sure you have fun doing it and you're unique in the process. And then you're carrying this water, meaning you're carrying this responsibility and you're carrying your emotions in the process, not able to allow your emotions to get in the way because your attention has to be focused on the greater good that's a lot that's a lot so i feel like with all that i feel like aquarians aquarians who do struggle with identity need to learn that when it comes to your identity you are a multiple of things and not just one thing you cannot fit in any mold you cannot fit in any box and that is okay and i feel like it is important to observe yourself and allow yourself to pretty much get attention for you being who for, for just you being you not being afraid of the attention because deep down you want the attention you're just not used to it because like i said the sun is on the opposite side so you want the attention but when you get it it feels completely uncomfortable because you're so used to not getting it so that's kind of I see how that could be completely challenging and when it comes to the appearance of the Aquarius being so unique and just just different in their appearance I also feel like that comes from a lack of attention it's like basically being as unique as you possibly can in hopes of getting the attention of say that parent the parent that you really wanted the attention from like you could have grown up in a household where basically you really your mom smothered you but you really wanted your dad to see you and your dad never saw you and that just completely like it just it changed it, it, it molded you into who you are because i feel like we do choose our parents in order to have the human experience that we were meant to have so even though the your mom smothered you and gave you all the attention it didn't even matter you still felt unseen because the person who you wanted to see you didn't see you or even if it's the other way around dad gave you all of the attention and love but mom didn't see you it plays a major part and i feel like being completely just unique in your presentation that is a part of wanting to be seen but when you are seen it makes you uncomfortable and another thing too with the sun being in in leo and the aquarian side of the chart being completely dark i feel like that says a lot about pretty much how you identify with everything with your surroundings it's like i guess i said this earlier you have a hard time identifying with people places and things because the ego the sun represents how we identify with these things and that's not happening on your side but with you being who you are it's actually perfect because you know what it feels like to be to be forgotten that's what makes you an amazing humanitarian and because you are identified because you don't identify with everything that everyone else identifies themselves with that is what makes you a mover and a shaker that is what makes you a game changer that is how we are able to be authentic and innovative by not being defined by society's norms and just everything that meets the eye so in this video i want to talk about how all aquariuses are created equal and i'm referring to the life path numbers and the numbers within your birthday i've met 
Aquarians who surprise me. And why I say surprise me, meaning Aquarians are known to be the sign that rules astrology and rules just being unique, unorthodox and whatnot. And I would think religion is pretty common and traditional, but I've came across a lot of Aquariuses who did not want to hear anything about spirituality or anything about metaphysical or occult topics or astrology. They ruled it off as a bunch of BS or it made them uncomfortable. And I think that is because maybe they're still operating in the Saturnian side of their psyche and not fully embracing the Uranus side of the psyche. But like I said, how Aquariuses are unique, meaning all Aquariuses are not created equal, you will need your life path number. I'm going to show you how to find your life path number. You will add up all the numbers in your birthday and reduce to a single digit. I'm going to put something on the screen. If you were born on a day that has two numbers, like for example, you were born say on the 18th, you're going to want to add the one and the eight together. Look out for the number nine, but you're also going to listen out for the number one and the number eight because those numbers are also important in telling you about parts of your personality. In numerology, we don't reduce master numbers like the number 11, the number 22, and the number 33. But you will have to reduce these numbers in order to get the message that I have here for you. But whenever you're listening out, for example, if you have the master number 11, you want to listen out for what I say about the number one vibration, but keep in mind that that energy is amplified because the number one is repeated. Listen out for the number two because that is what it reduces to. The number, the master builder 22, you want to listen out for the number two energy. Keep in mind it's amplified. But listen out for the number four because that is what it's reduced to. When it comes to the master teacher 33, listen out for the number three vibration. Keep in mind that it's amplified because it's repeated. And listen out for the number six vibration because that is what it reduces to. So Aquarians in January and Aquarians in February are different in the sense that Aquarians in February are super emotional because the number two vibration represents our emotions. It represents being sensitive. It represents being caring. It represents being nurturing. The number two is a feminine number. So even though Aquarius is a masculine air sign, masculine meaning that it gains energy by action outward action the number two is feminine and it is energized inward i like to look at it as extroverts introvert whether you're extroverted or not or introverted or not it's just a good example to know uh, know how you are energized so the masculine signs are energized the way an extrovert would and the feminine signs are energized the way an introvert would so yes Aquarius is born in February will be the ones that are super sensitive, super emotional, and have a hard time letting go of toxic relationships. Aquarians born in Feb in January, January is the number one vibration. The number one vibration represents masculinity. The number one vibration represents the self, the I, creativity and new beginning. It is like a father figure while the number two is like a mother figure. So Aquarians in January will seem a little bit more, you know, confident, a little bit more self-absorbed than Aquarians in February because the number one vibration is the beginning. It's a leader and it's all those things that has to do with, you know, a protector. So if you added up all the numbers in your birthday and you got the life path number one or you're born on the first, Basically, you are an Aquarian who is, like I said about the number one, you are super confident. You are a natural leader. And even if you don't feel like that, that is how others see you. You might be an Aquarian who takes a little bit more time away for yourself because the number one rec represents the ego and how we identify with things. So basically with the number one being ego driven, not saying that you are, but the number one energy is, you might find that you get your feelings hurt very often. Like people might step on 
your crush your ego often but in the most simplest ways you might find that this happens especially when you're around people who tend to be you know attention seekers it's almost like they make you question your own confidence your own identity and all those good things aquarians strongly associated with the number two vibration are going to be aquarians that are super nurturing super mothering super loving these are the aquarians that are very committed when it comes to the people in their lives these are the aquarians that love bringing people together they love being around other people even though you might have your moments where you need to step away and recharge and reflect you still love being a part it's so these aquarians i feel like when they step away from one group they're with another group people strongly associated with the number two so maybe you strongly rely on your say maybe your father your sister a brother and a mother so you might not be consistently close with all of them at the same time and maybe sometimes you are but say if your dad doesn't see you for a while, that's because your sister is seeing you. Maybe if your sister doesn't see you a while because she got on your nerves, your mom is who is having your attention. Because people who are strongly associated with the number two vibration, these are your team players. These people like to connect and be around other people. And the number two vibration could be a little bit dependent and codependent at times. Codependent in the sense that supporting bad behavior in order to not lose a person and dependent because this number tends to not trust that it has what it takes it's like a mother or a mother energy uh say a tra uh, old-fashioned mom who depends on the father to pretty much provide and to do everything even though this mother is super powerful she doesn't give herself that credit so Aquarian strongly associated with the number three vibration is going to be an Aquarian that is super creative, super inventive, super just basically this Aquarius is just original and thought. This is an Aquarius that might have a hard time following through with things because the number three vibration is super, um, basically has a very beautiful mind, a mind that gets bored very easily so one minute you might be focused on one thing and then the next minute you're focused on the other so it's hard to follow through with things because an idea might sound way better than the actual process no an idea is way better than the process for people strongly associated with the number three very youthful people the peter pan syndrome type of vibe with these people never grow old very playful and yeah in the earlier age i feel like these aquariuses might struggle with reading writing or grammar or communication and that goes to the busy mind of this aquarius basically they are imagine uranus that seems so cardinal even though aquarius is fixed the number three is like a cardinal energy, just here, there, everywhere. So earlier in life, this Aquarius might have a hard time learning where maybe people thought that, you know, maybe you had a learning disability when that's really not the case. You're actually an amazing artist, an amazing creator. You would make a great entertainer. Like the number three belongs on a stage. This is our entertainer. And you might feel that call within yourself. Most of our writers are strongly associated with the number three and the number five vibration. And commitment might be super tough for you in the earlier years in life because the number three vibration pretty much is always, it's like basically the idea of being fully committed in something feels like a prison because there's this curious side to you that's always wondering what's out there. Aquarian strongly associated with the number four vibration is going to be an Aquarius that has a easier time committing to things. This is an Aquarius that is a hard worker that is dedicated to building foundation and is super stable. Oprah is an Aquarius who is strongly associated with the number four. The number four is a very hard working number. No other number can outwork the number four like drake says you never see me out because i live at my workplace drake beyonce jay-z puff daddy 
just to name a few they're not aquarians but they are strongly associated with the number four because the number four is known for hard work the number four doesn't know what to do with itself when it is not at work so yeah if you are an aquarius who are strongly associated with the number four vibration commitment and hard work is something that comes natural to you where you might find that you have to get pushed out of situations in order to change like it takes a lot for you to walk away from a relationship or a work situation even if it's no longer working for you and doesn't have your best interest at heart because like i said you take your commitments very seriously aquarians strongly associated with the number five vibration similar to the number three vibration the number five has to do with sudden and unexpected changes you might find that it is super hard for you to commit to anything or just be consistent because the number five is like the uranian energy that needs constant stimulation that is super innovative that is completely unorthodox basically earlier in life you might find that you had to escape like escape because escape in the sense of food drugs sex whatever it is we do to escape reality because whenever you're being still you just felt powerless it's almost like there's so much energy happening within you and you just needed an outlet to just put all this energy into people who are strongly associated with the number five vibration i feel like meditation will be very helpful meditation is as simple as a conscious breath in and a conscious breath out it'll help you to bring your attention to the body and to be more to be more stable to be more present in within your body people strongly associated with the number five can spark up conversations with anyone so if you have strong number five in your chart you'll find that you are super outgoing number fives are people who, these are our sales people these are our storytellers whatever work that you do she'll allow you to travel and it should allow should allow you the freedom of meeting different people daily and having unique experiences daily people strongly associated with the number five vibration don't like silence because the number five is super telepathic and they are afraid of what they will hear if everything gets quiet and there is nothing to be afraid of all you will hear is basically the fact that you are able to tap into realms and i know that might sound super scary yes you're able to be telepathic and just tap into the different realms and things that's happening around us aquarian strongly associated with the number six vibration is going to be an aquarius who is very fashionable and pretty unique within their fashions the number six has to do with the material plane so this is an aquarius that's going to take pride in their appearance and pretty much aspire to accomplish a lot of material things in the sense that and you might say no this is not me maybe you have a strong seven or four or something in your chart that you know that might take some of the attention away from that but aquarian strongly associated with the number three likes to get dressed up and this i'm sorry not three the number six and this could be from your year could add up all to the number six or wherever the number six is in your chart basically you like the idea of standing out material things are important to you You might find that you have a hard time as if you are a younger person and you aren't established yet you might find that you have a hard time securing a foundation for yourself because all of your finances are going out towards material things and even when you say okay i'm gonna be responsible and save and yes your bills will be paid on time but your extra that should go to saving is gonna go to the latest trends and things that you may feel that you need in order to add value to yourself because that is the material side of the number six another side of the number six is that the number six is very family community and home oriented so people strongly associated with the number six will be the types that will definitely have a gang of friends or just groups that they associate themselves with whether they are con consistent in these groups or not they enjoy getting together with friends and just bringing people together bringing the family together that is a beautiful thing for the number six another thing 
with the number six in the material world is I said it that the number six defines success based on material things. True success should be based on spiritual and emotional growth. How are you handling things emotionally today compared to how you handled them two, three years ago? Once we're spiritually and, and, and emotionally stable, we can lose everything and gain it right back. These Aquarians should also avoid social media when they're not doing so well because basically social media allows us to share a small 3% of our real life. So while you're out there looking, it just seems like everyone is doing so well and you're left behind when that's really not the case. So avoid social media when you're not feeling that great about yourself. Aquarians strongly associated with the number seven vibration is going to be the Aquarians that answer the call to astrology, numerology, metaphysics, occult topics, because the number seven is introspective. The number seven is deep. The number seven is untraditional. And the number seven wants to know more. And the number seven does not want to be told the way things are supposed to be or how the things are how things used to be. The number seven wants to figure out things for themselves. The number seven is introspective in the sense that it is always searching itself, looking for answers, trying to understand life. When the number seven reflects inward, it is looking for God and God can be found within us. So the number seven is looking in the right place. If you have a strong seven and you're like, no, this is not me. I'm not into metaphysics or none of these things then you are into just research. You're into research. Whatever you do at work, it has to do with you researching and bringing some form of truth out. Aquarians strongly associated with the number seven will be your loners because the number seven on a whole is a loner. But this Aquarian is not disappearing because they're trying to figure out who they are. Well, yes, this Aquarian is stepping away because they're observing life, nature, and everything. But this Aquarian is also stepping away because the number seven is a natural loner. But if you are a person that can add value to this Aquarian's life, they will associate themselves with you and will make themselves available for you. But you have to be a free thinker just like how they are. Aquarian strongly associated with the number eight vibration will be the ones who don't want to hear about astrology or numerology or maybe you had an experience where for most of your life you thought it was BS and you had an encounter where someone opened up your eyes like I had a client who she told me she was an Aquarius and I was shocked because she thought numerology and astrology and everything was a bunch of BS but I was able to break her break her down meaning tell her that you know you're associated with this number and that number and I bet you're an Aquarius and basically it was so on point where there's no way I could have guessed it, but I could have told these things about her based on what she did for a living and just her personality and the things she talked about and what was important to her. So even though she's an Aquarius strongly associated with the number eight vibration, who thinks a lot of this stuff is BS based on our encounter, she's now going to direct her attention inward and look into this thing because she realized there was no way what I said to her was a coincidence because a lot of people dismiss this stuff based on the general astrology that they see in the back of newspapers and things like that. And that's not really accurate for most people because we're more than just our sun signs. So yeah, Aquarians strongly associated with the number eight vibration are Aquarians who will are not, like I said, might have a hard time being into this stuff. These are Aquarians that might come off a little serious and just distant because the number eight vibration tends to always be in their head reflecting on how they can add value to themselves. So these are the people who are constantly going to school and trying to achieve different accolades that will add value to themselves. The number eight is a teacher and a student for life. These people are good when it comes to human resource work. 
being delegators and just overall being a manager being being in charge of others the number eight vibration is your your overseer you know your police officer so these aquarians are good when it comes to policing others and just making sure that everyone stays in line and do what they're supposed to do make sure everything runs smoothly and these are your hard workers they're always working hard and committed but as an aquarius and a life path number eight you might find that whatever it is that you do for work it's like yes you're committed and you're a hard worker but you'll need some kind of a variety like whatever an aquarius does for a living there will need some need to be some form of freedom in the work that they do aquarians strongly associated with the number nine vibrations are your humanitarians for real the number nine vibration doesn't rock the boat. The number nine vibration is a chameleon. The number nine vibration is like water. Wherever you pour it, it just fits the mold. You know, the number nine is super selfless. So selfless that if you add any number to the number nine, that number will reduce and remain itself. For example, you add the number two to the number nine. Two plus nine is 11. One plus one is two. It remained the same. And that is what a true humanitarian or a helper does. You help someone without changing them. You just add a little bit of you into them and add value to them. And that is an Aquarius strongly associated with the number nine vibration, or that's what that number nine will aspire to be. Aquarians strongly associated with the number nine vibration might find that you have a hard time learning, a harder time figuring out who you are in this life because with the number nine being such a chameleon and always molding and forming different molds, it's like when a relationship or a friendship is over, you'll find yourself constantly trying to figure out who you are all over again in the process of molding to these different people. An Aquarian strongly associated with the number nine is one who will need their time alone, but not as much as the others because the number nine uses other people as a mirror to that they use to in, to help them see themselves this is an aquarian that is also childlike and friendly and just have a very light energy and spirit about them because within the number nine is the number three vibration which is super youthful and then the number six vibration which is all about family community and just bringing people together so this is the aquarian who enjoys being around people being youthful and being playful the number nine could be because the number nine is such so mutable even though the Aquarian energy is fixed I feel like this Aquarian might tend to follow trends in the earlier part of life meaning if tattoos were popular when you were growing up and you're strongly associated with the number nine you might find that you had tattoos because that was popular within that time but yeah, Aquarian strongly associated with the number nine. I think it is important to put yourself first. The number nine is an empath, and I believe Aquarians are too because you're carrying that water. It represents the emotions within you. Basically, it's nice to know what other people need, but put yourself first. That is what self-love is, putting yourself first. I hope you guys were able to make it to the end of this video. If you did, give me the thumbs up to let me know that you did make it here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have subscribed to this channel. Please like this video, comment and share your experience in the comment box below. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.